Hey everybody, this is going to be a video on another functional group called carboxylic acids. That is carboxylic acids. So like I said, this is going to be another functional group. So this is going to be another um, combination of new atoms that are going to go on to our hydrocarbon structures that we had already previously talked about. So this is going to be similar with as alcohols were in terms of it's going to change the ending of the name. Um, but after that, pretty much everything else is going to kind of function the same. So the first thing you need to know is what a carboxylic acid looks like. So this right here is our carboxylic acid functional group. So it's a little bit more um, intricate than our alcohols were. So our carboxylic acid is defined as having a OH and a double bonded O coming off of the same carbon. So you need the OH, which kind of looks like an alcohol, but then you also have a double bonded O, and both of, this thing, both, both of these things are bonded to the same carbon. Just to kind of talk about the structure a little bit more in depth like we did with the alcohol. So technically you've got your carbon, and that carbon is single bonded to the oxygen, which is also single bonded to the hydrogen. And then the oxygen has its two lone pairs, and that is how the oxygen gets its full octet. And then this carbon is also double bonded to another oxygen. This oxygen also has two lone pairs, so this also ensures that the oxygen has its full octet. And then this carbon is finally single bonded to some other carbon, hydrocarbon, cyclo chain structure. And that's what this letter R is standing for. So basically some additional structure. So this whole thing is a carboxylic acid. Um, here are some examples of what a carboxylic acid looks like on different structures. So for example, here's what it looks like on a ring. So you've got your cyclohex, okay, so your cyclohexane like we had talked about before, and then hanging off of it here, we've got your carboxylic acid. Um, one thing I wanna point out is that this carbon right here, so the carbon that the OH and the double bonded O are on, that is right here. So do you see, here I'll erase it quick. Do you see how that comes together at a peak and then the double bond is coming off of that peak? That peak right there is considered a carbon and that is the carbon that the OH and the double bonded O are on. In a line structure, that carbon is right here. Okay, and then there's an also an additional carbon hanging off of that one. So there could be like a bunch of carbons or just two like this one. So this is what a carboxylic acid looks like. Double bonded O, OH. So now that we know what they look like, now we're going to talk about how we name them and how we draw them onto structures. So you know how alcohols got that ending anol? Carboxylic acids get their own ending, which is anoic space acid. So for example, we'll do this one first because this one's a little bit easier. So I've got a carbon here and I've got a carbon here, because remember this is going to be a carbon, so like where the double bonded O and the O are coming from. So I'm seeing two carbons, so you would say F, right, because F means two carbons, and then you'd go, oh look, there I've got this carboxylic acid functional group. What's the ending for that? Well, it is anoic acid, so this final name will be F anoic acid. And that's it. So again, we're just changing the ending. So once you recognize that there's a functional group on here, then you're gonna change the ending accordingly. So over here, let's name this one. So the first thing I see here is the cyclo. So I'm gonna say cyclo. There's one, two, three, four, five, six carbons in the cyclo. So I'm gonna say cyclohex. And then, oh look, there's this carboxylic acid functional group. So I'm gonna say cyclohexanoic acid because that is going to be our ending for carboxylic acids. One thing that I wanna point out is when you have got a carboxylic acid hanging off of a ring, it gets a little weird. So notice that the carbon, so the carbon that the double bonded O and the O are coming off of is not in the ring. Um, the reason it can't be in the ring is because then the carbon would have too many bonds. So for example, if I drew it like this, Right, and this was my carbon that the double bonded O and the O were coming off of. If I count the bonds there, there's one, two, three, four, five. And remember, carbon can only have four bonds. So whenever you have a cyclo, the carboxylic acid has to be like 
hanging off of the ring. So it's got to be like a little like, I don't know, it's hanging off. It's not in it. Where if it's in a chain like this, that carbon can then be a part of the longest carbon chain. So that's just something to be a little bit mindful of when you're naming these. And we'll do some more examples of these here in a second. Um, the reason we're talking about carboxylic acids is this is going to come into play when we start talking about fats during our food chemistry unit. So you might have heard the term fatty acid before. Um, fatty acids like omega-3, omega-6, omega-9, all of those are actually carboxylic acids. So we're learning about this functional group because it's going to kind of translate when we talk about food structures and things like that. All right, so let's go ahead and practice some of these. So let's start with this guy. Um, so if I'm going to name this, the first thing I'm noticing again is that cyclo. So I'm going to start off by writing cyclo. And then you want to count how many carbons are in the cyclo. So there's one, two, three, four, five carbons in the cyclo. So I'm going to say cyclopent. So just like how we've done before. Then I go, oh look, this is one of those functional groups. That's a carboxylic acid functional group. The ending of carboxylic acids is anoic acid. And then you're done. Again, notice how this carbon is not in the cyclopent. But you still say cyclopent because there's five carbons in the cyclo. You don't include that additional carbon hanging off of it. All right, now let's do this next guy. So for this guy, um, you're still going to start off in the same way where you're going to try to find that longest carbon chain. So looking at this, I'm seeing one, two, three, four. So a couple things I want to point out here. That's not a carbon. That is the bond to the OH. So that's kind of like when we're talking about alcohols. So this is just the bond to the OH. And then this is a carbon. So this is the carbon that the double bonded O and the OH are coming off of. So I've got four carbons in this structure, so I'm going to say but. Oh look, a carboxylic acid functional group. So I'm going to say but anoic acid. What? Where you go? Hang on. That was rude. I'm sorry. Um, so butanoic acid. Bute, four carbons, carboxylic acid, anoic acid. And then I'm noticing I've got this branch hanging off of it. So we can also have branches on these structures as well. This is a one carbon branch. So I'm going to say um, methyl butanoic acid. All right, and just like before, the last thing I need to do here is I need to add my numbers because I need to say where this methyl branch is. So I will count one way, one, two, three, four, and then I will count the other way, one, two, three, four. So just like with the alcohols, you need to ask yourself a quick question here and basically say what's more important, the functional group or the branch? And the answer is going to be the functional group. So since the functional group is more important, I need to make sure that gets the lowest number possible so I'm going to actually be going with my blue numbers here. So I'm going to be going, oop, help if I erase the right numbers. My blue numbers here, because I want to make sure the functional group gets the number one. So then I'm going to go one, two, three. So my final answer here will be three methyl butanoic acid. And that right there is probably one of the biggest mistakes. So essentially with carboxylic acids, you always just want to count from the carboxylic acid because that's going to be the most important thing. Just to make some connections here, I'm going to draw this in the structural format just so you can see what that would look like. So bute is four carbons, so I'd start off with one, two, three, four carbons. The anoic acid is that functional group, so then I'm going to do the double bonded O, OH. And the anoic acid has to be on the end. It could have been on this end, so I could have drawn it over here if I wanted to. That is totally fine. Um, that's up to you, but it does need to stick on the end every single time um, because to make sure that the carbon has four bonds. So here, we'll keep it over here and just do the flipped drawing of this. And so if it's three methyl, then you would go one, two, three, and you would put your methyl group right here. And then make sure all of your carbons have four bonds. All right, a couple more examples, then we're done. Um, so let's go ahead and draw, are you ready? Three, four, dimethylcyclopentanoic acid. Do you know how smart you are? When you're done, you're going to know how to draw 3,4-dimethylcyclopentanoic acid because, you know, you needed to do that for some reason. So 3,4-dimethylcyclopentanoic acid, let's break this down. 
the first thing I see is cyclo. Okay, so all right, cyclo. This is going to be in a ring. Cyclopent. Okay, five in a ring. So that's going to look like a pentagon. So now I've got the cyclopent part of the name done. And then I see this anoic acid. Okay, so that lets me know that there's a carboxylic acid on this. Now remember with rings, it really doesn't matter where you put it. Because um, wherever you put it is just going to be like the beginning of the ring. It's going to be number one. So I'm going to put it here. Um, and then remember carboxylic acids are a double bonded O with an OH. And remember they've got to hang off of the ring to make sure that this carbon only has four bonds. So that's the anoic acid part. And now I've got this 3,4 dimethyl part. So I know di means two. Methyl are one carbon branches. So two one carbon branches. And they must be on the three and the four. Now, since I put the carboxylic acid here, this automatically becomes carbon number one um, because this is going to be the most important thing on the chain. So if I go one, two, three, four, my branches will be boom, boom, right there. And that's it. If you had drawn the functional group somewhere else, um, if you can kind of imagine, it would like be the same. So if you drew it on the top or if you drew it on the side, remember all these are 3D shapes that can move and change. But if you were wondering, that is 3,4-dimethylcyclopentanoic acid. Easier one, butanoic acid. Let's draw this one structurally just to practice all the different methods. So but is four. So one, two, three, four. Anoic acid is that carboxylic acid. So the double bonded O, O, H. And they need to be coming off of the same carbon. So that would be this guy. Um, if I wanted to draw it skeletally, um, if you want to see both here really quick, but is still four. One, two. Hi, buddy. I'm almost done. Couldn't have waited. One, two, three, four. And then on the last carbon, you would do the double bonded O and then the OH. So make sure when you're done with these that you still only have four carbons at the end of the day. So those are carboxylic acids, the last functional group that we will be talking about at this point.